So what's the worst thing about church? <laughs> uh, it's a loaded question. Well, I know for me personally, uh, I, I, fa- I fell into the trap of idolizing the church. Like the church became my expression of faith. Mm-hmm. And so you idolize it and those that are working there sure. as, well, they've got it figured out. I don't. Yeah. And so I'm just kind of pandering to you know these folks that are in this arena, and I put it on this pedestal, negating the fact that there was a God who mm-hmm. created me that wanted to speak intimately sure. to me and have a relationship with me. But really, the church is us. It's people. And it's not just people lit- sitting in a pew. It's people living out who God made them to be. That's what Jesus did. He's our model. We've got to follow that. And it also satisfies your soul. Canning it down to a box turns it into a box. It turns it into a, a moment that you can check off and turn into, uh, I did it. You know, like a rote habit. Like a, exactly. You know, I go and this is what I do. And right. you begin to identify right. yourself. And one of the things that really frustrates me is when people start saying my church or my, it's possessive. Yeah. It, that just doesn't, yeah, it doesn't sit good. right in my heart. Right. It's just like we're trying to possess this thing that is the Lord's. Right. It's His possession. Right. We are His church. Yeah. We can't say it's my church. Right. And, and language matters because you follow what you say. Mm-hmm. And so when you begin to possess this stuff, then you begin to defend it. Right. You begin to, you know, oh, well, they're better. and It's competition. Sure. And, it, and it just births this whole thing yeah. that is not the heart of Jesus. Yeah. It, 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 you make it your identity. What would you you say are the best things about um, the church that you want to begin to hold on to and, and emulate? Yeah, well, the best thing about it is is it 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 gives you the 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 freedom to begin to understand who you are. It teaches you that there is a God. It teaches you um, about the relationship, but it's kind of go on the monopoly board. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jesus, uh, salvation. That's go. Well, you got a long way to go to get around the board again. You keep coming through that because it's good for you. It's community. But you don't stay there. So it's the rest of the week. It's the between Sundays part where you spend your most of your time. Yeah. I think one of the dangerous things about business is business puts you in a position to place your confidence in yourself. Right. Business predicates this idea of self-confidence yes. right. and get it doneness and you know what I mean. I'm going to go out there and grind it out. Yeah. And so we're taught in business right. is, hey man, take care of this. You got it. It's on you. And so we we build this inner confidence, right. but therefore we build this pressure. And so the question yeah. is, is would you rather have your confidence in yourself and your strength, mm-hmm. or in Right, the limitless strength of the That's Lord. That's right. You can do a lot in your own strength, but but what you're talking about is the difference between self confidence and supreme confidence. You're either going to have pain or practice. You've either got to start to practice this, or you're going to have pain hmm. uh, to get you to draw draw get get you drawn into it. Yeah. That's God. He allows us to go through things. To not only to prepare us, but to draw us into Him. Mm-hmm. When we start to rely on the Comforter, then we can find comfort. Until then, we're going to be afflicted. Do you believe that whatever someone's anointed gift is, that that can in fact become the provision for them and for their family? Absolutely. Yes, I've seen it, and I've seen it to my toes up. Um, and it, this is a hard one for people because they think they've got to lose everything or lose a bunch. It's not about that. It's about letting go of everything. And that's when you begin to put your confidence in God. Who you are will be, if you step into that, that will be what God uses to provide for your future. And he's really good at it. Yeah. When you combine the very best of faith mm-hmm. and the very best of business, what do you believe you get? What do people begin to experience yeah. in that point? Well, you know, look at it this way. Faith is about learning who you are because you're God's idea. Business is a way to express it. God did not put a wall between faith and business. We did that. And I think we have to tear it back down. Mm. And that's what we're doing. The problem is, so, so the responsibility is to live out your faith through business of some sort, whether you're an employee or whether you're running a company. The biggest question is, how do you do that? And that's what discipleship teaches you. Yes. 
And that's what we teach. So we are discipling. We call it mentoring, coaching, counseling. There's, it's the same pill in every bottle. But that's the big issue here. People have to work from anointing through gifts and then effort will happen. If God made you potter into clay, then you're his idea. So you have to start there rather than just work hard. Mm -hmm. Again, we were taught to work hard. It's not wrong. It's good. It's, it's great. But it's not God. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make you great to work hard. Well, how do you define the idea of anointing? Like, how would you define anointing? So if we can encourage somebody to step yeah. into their anointing, right. how would we define anointing? Well, it, it, think of anointing. Don't think of it as some dusty, ethereal, cloudy stuff uh, or, or spiritual hocus pocus. And I think people do that. Yeah. Anointing is the blueprint that God has created for us to step into his vision for our life. So the anointing is not a thing that falls on you. It's a thing that God has already done and created you to fulfill. Mm. So the anointing yeah. cannot manifest or, or be brought forth outside of rest, which is a great, that's why yeah. anointing requires right. rest. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So I think markers for people to understand, like, how, how do I step into this? What is God trying to say to me? Mm -hmm. I think frustration and anxiety are a great uh, kind of initiator sure. for people to go, oh, this is something more yeah. than just having a bad day. Right. This is something more than just struggling through a marriage. This is something more than just hating my job. Right. God is trying to get my attention to show me something. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's kind of like it's kind of like your anointing is uncovered. Yes. It is discover. It is uh, right. discovered. Right. And then your gifts are developed. Yes. In 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 the discipleship process. And right. So you have to. They're do the, already there. Right. But but when you use them, you get better at it. You have to hone them. That's and, right. Whereas your anointing, you can't really hone it. It is. It, it is. has to be revealed. Right. And then the gifts have to be, you know, um, yeah. built up. You use them, you get better at it. It's not about hard work to kind of get your gifts. It's about uncovering them and then by faith beginning to apply them. Yeah. Where we talk about anointing gifts and effort mm -hmm. instead of the world's way, which right. is effort, gifts, anointing. Right. Kind of like the words like work your yeah. butt off. Maybe do something you're good at or something you yeah. love, and then you'll be blessed. Right. This is saying, no, you yeah. are blessed. Right. You know what I mean? That's right. You get to do the thing you know that you love to do, That's right. and then work hard at it. So yeah. wrap up where effort, how does effort play a role for people living out their faith between Sundays? Yeah. Well, the heart moves the hands. Passion is where you have to, to, to come from. You have to come from a place of rest, and God will take you to a place of peace. If you come from a place of stress, then your whole goal is relief. One is focused out, the other is focused in. If you just let a church person box you into what they're telling you you need to be, or at your office what you need to be in business, you will wear yourself out and you will fall flat on your face or you will medicate with something that is not from God. Mm -hmm. That's where this always ends. And it doesn't change the world and it doesn't bless people's lives. You can do good deeds, but it's not truly a life purpose lived out. So when you look at it that way, the first step in this, in discipleship, is perspective. It's understanding who you are. Because ultimately the work of the Lord through our hands is always doing the impossible for the ungrateful. So if you want to do that, you will die on the vine unless it's coming from heaven into the earth because it's powerful. God fuels it. You win they win and you overcome because he's honored. So if you're in the job you hate, vocation frustration, start planting those seeds, start going through this process and you will either, God will provide a new opportunity for you or he'll create something for you over here. It always goes there. Be patient, don't throw it all away, but step gently into it, start planting seeds and it will happen.